teaching tonight, and we're also going to be having communion at the end. So make sure that you grab your kiddish cup and uh, have your your bread ready for the communion service that we'll have at the end because we're going to seal it. But I have an exciting word for you tonight, and the key is this. I want you to know the power of speaking his name. If you look back on our goals, we're at that place right now where we're going to learn to speak it. And that was the word the Lord gave me for the fall feast, speak to the rock. It's time to speak. It's learn, we have to learn how, how to proclaim, decree, and declare in the courts of heaven. Second tonight, I want you to be able to uh, feel the difference in your prayers and, and see the difference in your prayers by doing what I'm going to teach tonight, because it will definitely change the way your atmosphere and your results in prayer. I think one of the reasons people resist praying is because they don't get the results or the deliverables that they have. And so, um, you know, so that's why they don't pray as much. I can tell you this, if you want to get on fire with prayer, get with some people, pray, get results. And when you start realizing that prayer actually delivers, then you'll start praying more and more and more. In Kurt Landry Ministries, literally everything that we have has been birthed in prayer. So, uh, you know, it's something that, that we absolutely, totally believe in. And we know that it, it is mandatory uh, in the sense that if you want to have that intimate relationship with God and that intimacy is really what it's about. It's not even the results. Yes, the results come, but it's that intimacy. Tonight, if you would tell me where you're uh, watching from, some of you are new, go ahead and put in the comments and let us know where you are watching from. Now, we're going to speak to the rock and I want to talk to you about the, the name of the Lord. You know, it, it's really... Well, I want to show this to you. I wasn't going to do this, but you all know it anyway. The, the whole reason that I wrote this book, um, Reclaiming Our Forgotten Heritage, this is my testimony. And my testimony was I was a corporate guy that was very successful. And what I did as a corporate person is I was hunting for purpose to find identity. And really what you have to do is find your identity in the Lord. And that creates your purpose. But one of the things you'll read about in this book is that, you know, I was birthed out of, uh, conceived out of wedlock, and uh, I was born in an orphanage in Los Angeles, and I was adopted. My mother, my biological mother, named me after my father. So my real name is Joseph. And um, I didn't find that out until I was like 37 years old that my actual real name was Joseph. And it's interesting because that's what I operate in. If you know anything about the ministry, we're very strong in humanitarian aid and we have a Joseph call. So when I teach tonight and talking to you about the power of knowing your name and the power of knowing his name, it comes from a deep place in me. And, 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 it, and really the only way to get revelation of what the Lord is uh, wanting to reveal to you, it has to come supernaturally. And so I'm believing for that tonight. I'm believing that we're going to have a supernatural encounter. And uh, so uh, let's let's pray and let's get ready. Okay, Father God, we come to you now and we invite you into this precious time that we have together. And Lord, I ask that you would anoint me to share and anoint us to be able to hear and anoint us to be able to receive because we need to speak to the rock, but we have to speak to the rock from that place of identity in Messiah. And we need to speak to him in his true identity as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords and sovereign over all. So Lord, I ask that that supernatural security, that supernatural anointing would come upon us in Yeshua's name. Amen. So I'm going to start out tonight in our uh, reading in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 20. Matthew chapter 16, 13 through 20. And I'm actually going to read out of the Passion Edition tonight. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's just different enough from the New King James that I normally would read out of that I think it might um, spark some attention. And of course, I'll bring some Hebraic stuff with it as the Lord leads. Okay. So when Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples a question. What are the people saying about me, the son of man? And so you need to understand that Yeshua is saying, what are they saying about Yeshua? And he says, the son of man. Jesus 
uh, referred to himself, Yeshua in the Hebrew, he referred to himself as the son of man more than any other. That was his preference. When, if you would have asked him, say, okay, you would have had Jesus over for dinner and he would have said, how would you like us to address you? He would have said, son of man. And there's a reason for that. And we're going to unpack that tonight. In fact, the son of man is actually mentioned in the New Testament 83 times, mostly in the gospel. So that's how he referred to himself. So he, he has a preference for, for that. And, and people have, have that. You know, if you have a friend that's a doctor and you're good friends with him and, and you say, well, doctor, what about this? And you ask him a question, but your friend may be John and you say, John, it's a different, uh, it's a different way of processing. The same thing happens with me. Someone says, Rabbi, what do you think? Then I, I process it differently than they say, Kurt, what do you think? It's just the way things are, how people address you. So anyway, Jesus says, well, who do they say the son of man is? He's asking them a question. And he, now listen, he's sovereign. He already knows. Okay, so he knows the answer. But what he's doing, he's asking questions of his disciples in order to bring a revelatory identity to them, not to him. He knows he's the son of man. Okay, but he's trying to kind of crawl, walk, run with his disciples to get them, just like what we're doing tonight. He wants to crawl, walk, run with you to get you to understand why it's important that when you speak to the rock that you use the proper name. Okay, this isn't legalism. This is relational. I'm going to say it again. This is not legalism. This is totally relational. So then he says, um, who do they believe I am? And then he answered, some are convinced that you're John the baptizer. Others say you're Elijah reincarnated or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Verse 15, but you, who do you say I am? And Jesus asked. And see, that's the question is, is who you perceive him to be is how much faith and trust that you're going to have in him. Because if you look at the list of, of the things that were spoken out at Sukkot, we're speaking, but now we've got to alignment. So, so the next lesson's alignment, but the next one after that is dwelling, and the next one after that is love and trusting in him. All these steps is what the Lord gave me. These are steps that you can do between now and the end of the year that will absolutely change your life. But the key is when you ask the Lord, you need to know who you're asking, who you're speaking to, and what he plans to deliver. Because instead of this vague, like you're speaking into a cloud, no, he wants relationship with you. So he goes on to say, um, but you, who do you say that I'm, I am? Jesus asked. So Simon Peter spoke up and said, you are the anointed one. You are the anointed one, the son of the living God. So now Simon Peter, watch this, Simon Peter has a revelation that came from God supernaturally that Yeshua, the man, the rabbi he had been following was actually the anointed one. So the anointed one means the Christ in Greek or in Hebrew, the Mashiach, the Messiah. He, he's saying you're the Messiah and he's saying that you're the son of the living God. And so that's what he said, son of man. So, so now all of a sudden, Simon Peter is making a connection of who he's speaking to. So when the Lord says, speak to the rock, Simon Peter's speaking to him and this revelation is coming to him at Caesarea Philippi, okay? And, and then Jesus replies to him and says this, you are favored and privileged, Simon, son of Jonah, for you did not discover this on your own, but your father in heaven has supernaturally revealed this to you. So isn't it amazing that he has a supernatural encounter with Jesus to know that he's no longer just Jesus or Yeshua. He's actually the anointed Messiah of Israel and he is the son of the living God. So that means that he sits at the right hand. He, that means he is as God. All power, all dominion. 
It's like he's talking to God himself because this is his son. And in Hebraic culture, when you speak to the son, you're speaking to the father. That's why Jesus said, if you know me, you'll know my father. If you don't know me, you won't know my father. So that's very Hebraic in the thought. Why? Because all the inheritance and heritage and authority comes from his father to him, and then he brings it to us, okay? So now he says to Peter, I mean, he says to Simon, uh, Simon, son of Jonah, he says, I give you the name Peter. So now he's, he's not just Simon Peter, he changes it to Peter. And in the, uh, in the Passion Edition, it says a stone. And uh, in the Hebrew, it's actually at some, which means rock. So he says, no, because you have this revelation of who I am, we connect as family, and now you're speaking to me as the rock, and I'm speaking to you as a little rock. So what's happening is you're both, you're in the family now. Your revelation of who I am, instead of you focusing all the time on trying to figure out who you are, if you actually focus on me, Jesus, and you ask who he is, then that actually reveals to you who you are. So I'm gonna say it again. The principle here is as you consume the word and, and you consume him, he consumes you. So searching for your identity in all the wrong places, that's not the answer. The answer is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all other things, including your identity of him and in him, in, in you comes to pass. If this helping anybody, go in the comments and says, say, this is helping me, okay? And it says, I call you the stone. And this truth of who I am will be the bedrock foundation of which I will build my church. And so he says that the, the main number one out of, like out of all these things that, that I've told you at, at Sukkot, where you're abiding with me, the whole issue the, the whole issue, all this is great, but you got to learn how to speak to me and speak like me. This is, this is the winner right here. That's why tonight's service is super important for you to be able to grasp this, is how you speak to the king. And then the king speaks to you. Okay? Wow. So then he goes on, this is a bedrock foundation of which... I will build my church. And then he goes on with a legal term in the courts of heaven. He says, my legislative assembly and the power of death will not be able to overpower it. So he's saying, my legal one new man, that's why in, in Ephesians, when Paul was talking to the church at Ephesus, he says, remember that you were once foreigners and strangers, separated from the commonwealth of Israel without hope. Why? You had no legislative authority to go to the name of the Lord. You had no legislative to go and say, he is the son of man because you were Gentiles. We were Gentiles. We were without hope. We were separated from the legislative authority in the courts. We were outside the outer court. We had no inner court access. That's why Jesus came and when he died, he removed the middle wall of separation, creating one new man from the two. It's all about us identifying him and him identifying us as one new man. So he goes, the, my legislative assembly and the power of death will not be able to overpower it. I will give you the keys of heaven, the kingdom realm, to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven. So this is Passion Edition and New King James. I've given you the authority to bind on earth which bound in heaven and loose on earth which is loosed in heaven, okay? But anyway, so he's giving you the in the spiritual realm, the kingdom realm, to forbid or to deny or to cancel or to put a spiritual restraining order on the work of the enemy so that you can go forward to succeed in what you're called to do. Because we battle not against flesh and blood, but powers, principalities, heavenly hosts, and dark places. So then he says, which forbidden in heaven to release on earth that which is released in heaven. 
he gave his disciples strict orders not to tell anyone that he was God's anointed one. So it's interesting. He wanted to be known as the son of man, but he said, it's not time yet that they know that I'm the Messiah. Okay. To be known as the son of man, who do they say I am? Oh, John the Baptist, Elijah, you know, maybe Jeremiah, maybe one of the prophets, but he's saying, don't let them know that I'm carrying the anointing. Why was he doing that? He was abiding in that. He was sheltering and protecting that anointing so that the enemy wouldn't attack what he was carrying prematurely and, and cause unnecessary spiritual warfare. So speaking to anybody, okay? So now here's the key is this, is that if you go to Philippians chapter two, let's go to Philippians chapter two, and uh, let's see here. Philippians chapter two, sorry. That was the Lord telling me to go to Philippians chapter two. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Okay. I want you to listen to this scripture in regards to what we're talking about, his name, okay? And speaking to him as, let's not reveal that he's the anointed one, but let's know him as the son of man, which means if he's the son of man, we're the first fruits. That's why behind me it says, to him is the first fruits. The whole purpose of tabernacles is it's a first fruits celebration. So this is what it says. Verse uh, chapter two of Philippians, verse six. He existed in a form of God, yet he gave no thought than sees iniquity, uh, equality with God as his supreme prize. Instead, he emptied himself of his outward glory by reducing himself to the form of a lowly servant. He became human. He humbled himself, becoming vulnerable choosing to be revealed as a man and was obedient. So he chose for that 33 years, he chose to be revealed as a man. See, it's all about the, even though he's on earth as a man, he is still the son of man. But he didn't, he's, he's okay being the son of man during the 33 years. He just doesn't want them to know he's the anointed Messiah. Okay, now just, just follow this with me. He was, perf he was a perfect example, even in his death, criminal's death by crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names. He has been given now the greatest of all names. Now that he has died and took hell, death in the grave, and he has resurrected and he sits at the right hand of the Father, now we can say he is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. We can, we can start making these decrees because now his assignment has been finished and that's why he said at the end of the crucifixion, it is finished, now you can go on. See, a lot of times what we do is we don't give time for the authority to really come into maturity or into birth. That's one of the reasons that the Lord gave me this word is you have to first rejoice and network with the right people. You have to write down what your new plan is and you have to speak to it. But when you speak to it, you need to speak to it in great faith and great authority because that's what's going to birth it because we are in that year of pay where you actually speak it out. And he says, because of his obedience, God has exalted him and multiplied his greatness. And he has now been given the greatest names. The greatest what? The greatest names. The authority of the name of Jesus causes what? Every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to his name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. And every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ, the Lord, Yahweh, will bring glory and honor to his Father. And so I did a project, our team did a project, and uh, I want you to go ahead and download it if you, if you haven't, but go, in, go ahead and go to clmmin.com forward slash Psalms 91. Now, 
what we did on this teaching is on the Psalm 91 teaching, we actually put it where you put your name into, it says right here, we trust as, insert your name, and then God's name here. So one of the things that we did in this project that I really like, and it's important for you to understand this, is I send you, I'm sending you a list, you can download it, of all of the Lord's names. So it's plural. So let me show it to you. Okay, so there's several pages of it, sorry. Okay, so I want you to get the, the, the names of God and, and what you need to do is all the descriptions of those names are there so that when you pray Psalm 91 or if you're praying over your family, you're inserting his name, revelatory of the Holy Spirit. And the more you start to speak his real name, the more you start becoming part of the family and that name starts to transform you. See, that's what happened to Peter at Caesarea Philippi. He said, who do you say that I am? And he says, you are the son of the living God. You are the anointed one. And Jesus said to him, Yeshua said, oh, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father revealed it. Highly favored and privileged are you that you actually get to see who I am beforehand. And that's the key is you need to catch the revelation beforehand. That's why it's, it's, it's number four is to speak it and get the identity beforehand so that you align your pure identity so that you can dwell in his presence now, I'm gonna bring a word on Sunday. This coming Sunday, I'm going to be doing a virtual uh, service in Shelbyville at Living Stones with Pastor Eddie Reed. And so I'll be on here, we'll be carrying it on my network at 1045 Central. And what I'm gonna be talking about is the Feast of Tabernacles and why, why is it that the non-Jewish people need to understand the Feast of Tabernacles. What are the lessons? What are the practical applications of this seven-day feast that we call Tabernacles, known in Hebrew as Sukkot? I'm actually gonna be unpacking all of that, and it has every, absolutely everything to do with understanding whose table you're sitting at, who you're talking to, how to ask for things, and then how to actually receive it. And when you do that, then you're in alignment. This is called spiritual protocol, not spiritual warfare. And then you'll be peaceful dwelling with him. And when you're peaceful dwelling with him, you'll love and trust in him. You'll put God first. You'll be eternity minded, single minded. And then you actually become the first fruits of everything that the Lord is asking you to do. And I can tell you, like the whole reason that I wrote the book, Reclaiming Our Forgotten Heritage, the whole reason I wrote the book was because, you know, it was my identity and my real name, just finding out that I was a Joseph. Totally confirmed all the humanitarian aid, the millions of dollars that we have done over the year. Why did I have favor like that? Because I was like Joseph in the Bible and many other things. So who knows? You may be a Nehemiah. Who knows? You may be like a Deborah. You know, who knows? You may be like an Esther. All those things come if you want to know your call and your purpose, then you need to seek him first. And when you seek him, then the, excuse me, then the revelation of who you are actually gets revealed. Okay. So I want to go ahead and we're going to uh, seal this with communion. And uh, Christy's not here tonight and she sends her love and blessing to you. And I know it's always better when she and I are doing the communion together, but she sends her love and her prayers to you. And uh, so if you would go ahead and uh, uh, get your, your uh, communion. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to say a special blessing over the communion tonight. Okay. If this helped you tonight, go ahead and in the comments, just say thank you. This helped me. I just wanna know if we're on track and we're helping you. That's the key. We wanna, we're here to serve you. We're here to, to bring the best that we have. And uh, I know many of you really enjoyed the service, uh, you know, back in House of David with the live stream. And I appreciate that. And we're working on what that looks like in the future. 
And But we do listen to uh, the things you ask for and request because we are servants. We are here to serve you and, and we love you, okay? So now here's the key is when the word says, when the word says that every tongue will confess that Yeshua is Lord. You're placing this bread on, where's it go? It's going on your tongue, okay? So this is my prayer. Father God, in Yeshua's name, I pray that as this bread touches our tongue, that our tongues would always confess that Jesus Christ, Yahweh, will bring glory and honor to his Father, and that every tongue will proclaim that Yeshua is the Messiah. He is the Son of Man. He's the Son of God. He is the Anointed One. He is the Mashiach in Yeshua's name. Now the blessing, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem Men Haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. So Father God, I thank you, Like just like the hot coal in Isaiah, change the lips and the tongue. Lord, change my lips, change your lips and our tongue, that Lord, that we might speak to the rock and be like you in Yeshua's name. And Lord, now we apply the blood of Jesus the most powerful spiritual agent in the kingdom realm is the blood of Jesus. The enemy cannot touch the blood of Jesus. That's why it's important to take communion because you're bringing it into your body. All sickness, all disease, all infirmities, all oppression, depression, anything in this temple, we are the temples of the most high God. Anything inside this temple that is out of alignment, Lord, we cleanse it with the blood of Jesus that we might become a dwelling place in him, that, Lord, we might love and trust you totally, that, Father God, we would be sons and daughters of the king and we would put you first. We would be eternity-minded. We would lay up our treasures in heaven, not on earth. And Lord, we would be single-minded because your word says in a double-minded man should not expect to receive anything from God. So Lord, we decree that we are single-minded. And Lord, as we lift our cups, we speak the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Borei Peri HaGafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just praise him for a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask that you visit each one of your children. Lord, your word says that you are no respecter of persons. Lord, what you did for Simon Barjona, changing his name to Peter, the rock, do that with us. Lord, let it be revealed not in our carnal head, but in our spirit that you are the anointed one, the son of God, and that you sit at the right hand of the father. And father, let us praise you for the awesome privilege and the supernatural impartation that we can actually pray in the name of Yeshua. Lord, we speak to the rock. We speak to the hardness in our hearts. We speak to the rock of our salvation. We ask you, Lord, tenderize us in this season, in this closing time of the Feast of Sukkot Tabernacles, 5781. Lord, let us not miss it. Father God, we cry out like the Apostle Paul. Oh, that I might know you. Lord, 
we're in need of many things, but not anything more important than knowing you. Let this communion, let these words take the scales off our eyes that we might see and know you as the I am that I am. Lord, when you walk the earth, you enjoy being referred to as the son of man, that you're our brother. And Lord, it's an awesome revelation because you were sinless, God incarnate, but yet you wanted to be family with us. Lord, let the revelation of that go deep down inside. Let all fear, doubt, and unbelief, oppression, let it all be gone. And Lord, I pray for all those who are battling sickness and infirmity right now. And I bind it in their earthen vessels and I cast it out into the lake of fire where it cannot attach itself to anyone ever again in Yeshua's mighty name. We seal this prayer in Yeshua's name. Praise the Lord. Well, I want you to know that you can still get in your uh, Tabernacles special offering. You can go to clmmin.com forward slash donate. And uh, uh, it's actually, I think it ends on this Saturday, but you can get your, your offering in. I would really encourage you to get your offering in during that feast window. If you haven't had a chance to do that, you can do that now. And also, I want you to make sure that you go and download the names of God, okay? And this is a free download. And where's my card at? There it is. So go ahead and go to Psalms, clmin.com forward slash Psalm 91. And if you'll download this, you'll get the Psalm 91 prayer where you put your own identity, your own name, but also we'll send you a list of the names of God so that you can see the definition of them. It's all the work is done. And then you will be able to apply that into your prayers, proclamation, decrees. And this is all about you getting results with your prayers. We wanna thank you so much for such a wonderful feast of Sukkot. This has been a wonderful time. We had a record turnout at House of David. Kurt Landry Ministry had a record turnout also online. And so I'm just so thankful to all of you who are searching the Hebrew roots of the faith, standing with Israel, blessing our Jewish people and allowing us to be a blessing. We thank you. I want you to know that you're our heroes and we love you and we bless you. Christy sends her love to you as well. And know this, that Sunday morning, 1045 Central Time, I'll be doing a virtual service for Shelbyville Church, Living Stones in um, Shelbyville, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. And I'll be bringing a word. And the word is about why should the non-Jewish people understand the Feast of Tabernacles in 2020? Why is it that a New Testament believer, what riches, what nuggets, what revelation is there by celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, is there a blessing? Is there a mystery? Is there something that the Lord wants to reveal to me by inviting me to put my feet under his table at Tabernacles? And the answer is yes. And you're gonna find that out 1045 Central and uh, join us. So Lord, uh, I'll be teaching, I'll be doing the rest of the 10 goals. Um, and so pay attention to those. And if this has blessed you, please subscribe to our network and go ahead and hit that share button. And the more the numbers go up and the more voice we have, the more effective we are with our message. You are an asset to the Lord because your share button allows the message of God to multiply. It's like a dandelion. You get the truth, the Lord breathes on it, and the seeds go all over the airways. So why we have the internet in this season, we won't have it forever like this. Let's go ahead and use it for good because the enemy certainly tries to use it for bad. And the best thing to do is the scripture says, by doing good, putting the foolish talk of foolish men to naught. 
bless you. We love you and 